Okay, now that the worst of the year is out of the way and my rage is all properly vented, I can now reward myself and talk about my favorite movies of the year. So, these are my top 15 favorite films of 2014. Coming in at number 15 is the scariest movie I'd seen all year, The Babadook. I just saw this movie last month and needless to say, I'm still sleeping with the lights on. It's kind of sad. It revolves around this woman who is dealing with a past tragedy and is going through some psychological issues involving her bastard son and soon finds herself being stalked by the Babadook, a creature that may or may not reside solely in her mind. It relies on actual scares, things that are scary, psychological horror. It doesn't just jack up the fucking value whenever someone walks around the corner like fucking Ouija did. Okay, that is not real horror. This is real horror. And it was nice to actually have a horror film come along and remind us all what all horror films have the potential to be. I bought this movie the day it was released online, and I am desperately awaiting the Blu-ray release of the Angry Video Game Nerd movie. After years of hard work and determination, James Rolfe's vision has finally come to life, and it is glorious. The characters were funny, the story was funny, and the, the overall plot of the film was actually very moving. It was obvious watching this film, right from the opening sequence, that James Rolfe is someone who actually has a lot of love and respect for his fans. And incorporating that love for his fans within the plot of the film, I felt was a very nice touch. All the technical aspects that went into making this film a reality did not disappoint in any way. It's every bit as impressive as the movies that Doug Walker and his team have released over the years, and I am anxiously awaiting to see what James Rolfe has planned for us next. After so much controversy, I never thought I'd see the day where I got to see the interview. But I saw it online when it was released about two weeks ago, and I laughed my balls off. What makes this movie so great is that the interview is actually a comedy with a lot to say, especially in regards to the media and the news industry and how we perceive things. For a movie about a bumbling talk show host and his best friend attempting to assassinate the leader of North Korea, it's actually a lot smarter than you may think. I am hard pressed to find one scene in this movie that did not have me laughing on the floor. James Franco and Seth Rogen have unbelievable chemistry to the point where you not only believe that they are these characters, but that they are the best of friends. The interview was a very funny, smart, and ambitious film with a lot to say, and I enjoyed every second of it. I'm not ashamed to say it. The theory of everything made me cry like a little bitch. There ain't nothing worse than watching a fucking fat man weep. This film is about the true life story of Jane and Stephen Hawking, told mostly through the eyes of Jane as she tries to help her husband over the years. What I like so much about this movie is that it just displays two people who are stuck in a very shitty situation. And it's seeing how they both progress and how they both start breaking down separately that makes it all the more heartbreaking in the end. It would have been very easy to just demonize one of the characters, especially Jane, but the film doesn't do that. It instead just shows the hardships that they both have to endure so that you can understand them. You understand why they feel the way they do, how they feel the way they do in every scene, and it works beautifully. I was moved by this film and undoubtedly captivated. It is a great film, and if you haven't seen it, I recommend you check it out. Gonna get a lot of hate for this next one. Probably a few what the fuck stares and a few unsubscribes, but I'm sorry. Transcendence was a science fiction film that did what real science fiction films are supposed to do. It thrives on ideas and intelligence rather than just having someone come out and say, well, we know this movie is boring and stupid, so we need Spock to have a hissy fit for no reason. Oh God, it was so terrible. It presents the ethical and moral dilemmas of scientific perfections from many different points of view and challenges them. This is what good sci-fi does, and I'm sorry, but I loved it for that. If you hated this movie, then you know what? You hated it, okay? I'm not here to fucking change your mind, okay? But if you couldn't find anything to enjoy in this film, then you know what? That's entirely your loss. And furthermore, if you think this flop being on my list is bad, just, well... 
You're all gonna be really pissed when you see what's at number five. Everything is awesome. The Lego Movie kicked so much ass. No, seriously, the Lego Movie was fucking awesome. Nobody was expecting this movie to be good, let alone great. Phil Lord and Chris Miller, the duo behind 21 Jump Street, 22 Jump Street, Colliding with a Chance of Meatballs, and Clone High, have crafted a film that is funny, interesting, and uh, most of all, memorable. For a film marketed as a kid's film, it seems to resonate more with adults than it does with kids. The adults who grew up playing with Legos and learned how to create things with them, and that's what's so good about this movie is because it celebrates that. This film being adult was something that I was not expecting, but I found to be very welcoming. I knew going into this sequel that I was going to get an awesome action flick, but I was not expecting Captain America the Winter Soldier to be this fucking smart. Captain America the Winter Soldier is one of the smartest comic book films I have ever seen while still being an incredibly fun movie to boot. It balances action scenes with a great story, great characters, and just this overall social commentary about national security, and it all works so damn well, it blends perfectly together. The back and forth between Johansson and Evans was often very moving. I also love that this movie did what Iron Man 2 failed to do. In Iron Man 2, they just shoved in Nick Fury, Black Widow, and S.H.I.E.L.D. for no fucking reason. You didn't need any of them in the movie. They were there to say, oh, guess what? The Avengers is coming. Yeah, we didn't need them in that movie. In this, they're indispensable to the plot, and they blend into the story perfectly. <laughs> X-Men Days of Future Past is undoubtedly the best X-Men movie to date. It completely makes up for all the problems brought about by Last Stand and Origins. And while it does essentially wipe out the films that were good as well, let's face it, after those two films, this series was in desperate need of a clean slate. The characters were wonderful. James McAvoy gives one of the best performances of the year as Professor Charles Xavier, and Peter Dinklage was just a great ball of trash. Wonderful villain. And I also loved how Mystique and Quicksilver were portrayed. Quicksilver has the best scene in this movie, and if you've seen the movie, you know exactly what scene I'm talking about. And Mystique is finally, finally, she's not a lackey anymore. She is finally that badass lone assassin that she was always meant to be, and I fucking love that. Jennifer Lawrence, I fucking love you. Thank you for giving me the Mystique that I know and love. Yes, I loved this movie. Yes, I swear, Guardians of the Galaxy is the last comic book movie on this list. This was my favorite comic book film of the year, and it remains my favorite Marvel film to date because while it's not the best acted, written, or directed, I have still never had more fun watching any kind of Marvel film. Not even the Avengers, which survives solely on being fun. Guardians of the Galaxy understood its story, its setting, and its characters so well and gave us a space opera that was funny, meaningful, and just wondrous to behold. The movie looks stunning, the actors are wonderful, and I just can't wait to see what other adventures await these characters down the line. Number six is Interstellar, or as I like to call it, 2001, with all of the boring, pretentious stock footage bullshit. Interstellar is a visual feast for the eyes, offering great emotion, well-written and developed characters, and a meaningful, thought-provoking story at its core. Much like Transcendence, this was a work of true science fiction. It's a film that raises questions about our place in the universe, and not necessarily how much mankind will achieve, but how much we are willing to achieve. I love the actors, I love the effects, which were absolutely mind-blowing, and more than anything else, I admired the very ambition of this film. Was it my favorite sci-fi film of the year? No. That's at number four. gonna get a lot of shit and what the fuck stares for this next one but uh yeah i maintain that winter's tale is a fantastic fantasy film and it's probably one of the most misunderstood movies i've ever seen in my life people have been lambasting this movie to death so i'll be the one to defend it 
I loved everything about this movie. The set designs were wonderful. The overall plot was moving. The fantasy elements of the plot mixed with the romantic elements of the plot were mixed together very well. And just to top it all off, the two main leads were spectacular. I maintain that I have not seen two actors work better off of each other all year, and I've seen the theory of everything. Colin Farrell and Jessica Brown Finley are magnificent in this film, and the back and forth between them is so damn good, this movie could have kept going for another hour and a half and I still wouldn't have given a shit. I admired the creativity and the passion of this film to no end, and that's what a good fantasy should be. It should be about letting your imagination run wild. It should be doing things that we've never seen before, and trust me, you've never seen a movie like this. Fantasy films don't have to be ungodly fucking realistic. In fact, no fantasy film should be that way. It never once spoof feeds you any information and gives you clues and ideas to figure out the story like a fucking adult. Winter's Tale is not only a movie in desperate need of more repeat viewings, it is a film in desperate need of a fair shake. Number four is my favorite sci-fi film of the year, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. It should really be no surprise as Rise of the Planet of the Apes was number two on my best of 2011 list, and while I like that film a little better, this is still a great movie. The whole dynamic between the apes and the humans was beautifully done. It has some of the best action I've seen all year, and fucking Andy Serkis. Oh, Jesus, he's so awesome in this. God damn it. He's even better here than he was in the last one. I don't know how the fuck the Oscars can just keep snubbing this guy. It's ridiculous. I don't give a shit if it's motion capture. It's still his fucking facial features and his movements. He deserves an Oscar for this shit. Not some special award, I mean Best Actor. But the Academy won't do that. Why? Well, as we all know, if it's not a movie involving one-dimensional characters living in an evil country while drug lords chase them, and all the while they demonize the concept of money, while simultaneously the worst character in the film becomes rich, it's obviously not worth the Academy's attention. I hate you. Number three is Gone Girl. David Fincher showed me once again with this film why I will go see any fucking movie he does. Let's just let Alien 3 slide. I mean, even he hates that one. Gone Girl is a film with so many twists and turns that you are never able to decide where it's going. And that's what I love about it. You can never tell, like, what's going to happen next. You can't even predict what's going to happen. Like, you think you know what's going on, but then something happens in the middle of the film. I'm not going to spoil it, but something happens that just blows your fucking mind and you're just sitting there dumbfounded like no way that just fucking happened no no that's fucking ingenious I loved how unpredictable and surprising this movie was and as good as Ben Affleck was in it Rosamund Pike was so wonderful playing his wife she is so awesome and I'm not gonna tell you why she's awesome but you just gotta see the movie Tim Burton returns to drama and proves that he certainly has not lost his touch with big eyes. This was a film about artist Margaret Keane who painted children with big doe eyes. They became popular, but her husband ended up taking all the credit for it. And this film is pretty much how that whole story went down. Not only is Tim Burton's direction flawless, but the dynamic between Amy Adams and Christoph Waltz is just amazing. These are two immensely talented actors delivering very powerful performances. I love the work of Margaret Keane and how it's displayed in this film because it really lends itself to Burton's style. Just like David Fincher with Gone Girl, Tim Burton showed me with big eyes why he is still one of my favorite directors of all time. Yes, Birdman is my favorite movie of the year. No one this year gave a better performance than Michael Keaton playing this once famous actor who tried staging a comeback by writing, directing, and starring in his own play on Broadway. Keaton has not been this great in fucking years. I love the whole element where Birdman is in his head giving him advice and talking to him. That was worth the price of admission alone. Just hearing Michael Keaton do his Batman voice again. It was awesome. When you talk about Michael Keaton, immediately you think of Batman. And this movie brilliantly, I mean so brilliantly, plays on that. It's about an actor who's desperately trying to step out of his former shadow and into a new light. Just in the hopes of being taken more seriously. 
It's an incredibly moving and unique film, and while it's not all done in one continuous shot, it's made to look like it is. This film is directed like it's one continuous tracking shot, and it, it's gorgeous. It looks amazing. There was not a single actor who gave a bad performance in this movie. Edward Norton was great, Naomi Watts was great, Emma Stone was great, Zach Galifianakis, holy shit, he was wonderful in this. I mean, yeah, Galifianakis can do drama, who knew? This movie was captivating, surprising, original, funny, there's just not enough that I can say about Birdman. Birdman just stole my heart and it is the single best movie I saw in 2014. So what are your favorite movies of 2014? Please put it in the comment box, let me know. And I really hope you guys enjoyed the reviews this year, and I look forward to many more years with you.